Hey, how you doing? Justin, welcome to my studio. A lot of people are asking for a bit of a look-see around, so I thought I'd do a little quick uh, behind the scenes -y sort of thing before I do a big rebuild because I'm just waiting on a, a new desk. So this is kind of the new setup here. Um, I've got my new camera over there, which is a uh, Panasonic GH5 camera. Uh, with a Sigma 18mm lens on it. Uh, it's a uh, fixed lens, not a zoom lens. Uh, and basically I, I sit down here on my uh, sofa. You see the blanket and the hat uh, sitting there. One little thing that you might not know about is the hat secret. Oops, you drop my camera there. Um, so, you know, I'm losing my hair. There's no question about it. I've still got more than I anticipated having now in my 40s. I was expecting it to go way before now, to be honest. Um, but the hat's become a bit of a thing. It's, rather, you know, it's a kind of a trademarky thing. And uh, one thing I found really useful is that is it has the microphone in the hat. So uh, when I'm wearing the hat, I've got the little microphone sitting just in here. Uh, and the reason this is so cool is because when I used to wear a lapel mic, uh, if I look down at the guitar, because the lapel mic would be here, when I look down at the at the guitar, it would get really boomy, and I didn't really like that. It made kind of editing the vocals a bit more awkward than it should have, or I had to be really conscious or rub on stuff. So having it in the hat's been, uh, you know, a great little trick. Now, uh, one of the, a couple of the other things that are kind of new that I've got going on. One is this uh, Atomos. Uh, monitor. Now, the thing with the monitor, I'm not using it to record because you can use this to record video as well, but I just use this to check my focus and the framing from the big camera because uh, when I, you know, uh, it's a bit of a pain <laughs> still because I have, I'm using manual focus. I have to go over it and kind of check the focus out and then kind of guess how much I have to tweak the lens to, to get it focusing right, which is mildly a pain in the bum, but it's okay. Um, but that's made a huge difference. Um, I record directly to Pro Tools. Uh, so one thing that's interesting is I use one of these uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, trackpad things just here. So I can actually control start and stop Pro Tools and adjust things if I need to on the fly. I usually have a little notepad here as well, uh, just with you know things that I need to, to get working on as well. I'm going to do a, a more complete kind of look around the, the Pro Tools setup because I'm still kind of tweaking the audio stuff. I'm really happy with the video. Um, and then as well as having that big main camera, I've now started using a second kind of a, a, a portable uh, camera, I guess. Uh, this one is a Panasonic GH4, which was I bought because I was thinking about moving to this sort of camera and then I ended up buying a different one. I ended up getting a, um, a Canon XA20, I think is the one I've been using for the last little while. Um, again, I've got this little, you know, a, a little monitor thing down the bottom. It's not as big as the other one, uh, but it, it's really necessary for trying to get things nice and sharp. Uh, on this one is a, another Sigma lens. This one's an 18 to 35. Originally, I had this actually over on the on the big main camera, but I was only using it at, at 35, and uh, I wanted to get a bit wider and a bit closer than the other thing I had on here, which was a prime plantar, I think it was called, the lens that was on here before. So I got rid of that, put this on. Uh, these the the Canon fit Sigma lenses are amazing. Uh, you have to use this Metabones uh, thing in between. I use this big cage on both the cameras. This is a small rig uh, brand cage, just so I can kind of adjust the camera. I've got it set so I can kind of move it manually with a bit of force, um, and I don't want to risk pressing on the dials and stuff. So that's that's why I use the big. Uh, uh, thing there. Uh, basically the, the voice gets plugged into a little thing. I'm about to just wobble the camera around a bit again here so you can see the seat. So I've got this little XLR uh, lead here which is where the hat the hat plugs into that. It's unplugged at the moment. I'm not exactly sure why. And then that goes into a little kind of a stage boxy thing which lives uh, around the back of the seat. And then that's those the, the big cables here that run around and they get plugged into the rack. Now, all of the audio, this is my kind of rack. It's mainly a studio-y kind of a thing, I guess, the, the rack of stuff here. Yeah, i move the chair out of the way here as well. Um, I don't, I'm not using much of the fancy stuff here, the Neve preamps and stuff, which are like, you know, kind of the best preampy sort of things that you can get, but I don't use them for recording videos, only for when I'm doing, you know, 
serious recording stuff. I use the Universal Audio Apollo though all the time, that's mega. Um, so I basically use everything goes into that. Some of the stuff goes via this thing down here, this patch bay, which is like a routing system. Uh, we'll talk about that more another time. Nearly always for the videos, I'm using the Kemper, it's amazing. Although now that I've got this Oxbox thing, move that stuff out of the way. This is the Universal Audio Oxbox. Uh, and that way I can kind of get it. It's easier to record real amps again. So I've been finding I'm using real amps a little bit more now. I love this amp. This is the, the Audio Kitchen Big Trees. This is probably my favorite amplifier. It's, a, it's like an amp head. It looks like a pedal, but it's um, just an amp head. Um, so those signals go through into Pro Tools, which I had up on the screen a second ago, but uh, I took it off. Uh, so yeah, it goes directly into Pro Tools. Uh, I monitor through these Focal Twin speakers, which is sound uh, mega. Uh, the lighting, this is a, a, a Lyra, L-Y-R-A. And then um, I've got another, let me just move that camera out of the way before I knock it over. Um, the other light up here, which is basically this, the, the big one, the Lyra, kind of gives me my main light. This one just gives me a bit of light on my shoulders just to kind of separate me from the background. And then I use this other little, uh, to, I think it's a Manfrotto brand, small little LED in a softbox again, just as a to kind of a fill light. Um, the amp collection-y sort of stuff was the, the big tweak that I did from the old setup, really. It's, it's mainly decoration, you know. I'm not using these amps a whole lot at the moment. I mostly use the Kemper. The ones that I do use, I've been using the Victory a little bit lately, mainly because it's new and I've, uh, you know, I'm still trying to get my, you know, figure it out how, how it works for me. I use the Lazy J's, the one if I've got like a, uh, workshop or something like that that's usually the first one that I grab um, yeah I've got uh, not all of my guitars but a chunk of the guitars that I use regularly uh, live in these stands at the back here that's a, a tour for another time uh, there's a big pile of um, well you can see there my pedal board as well which is it's one of those ones it's, it's too big to carry around I made a too big a pedal board now and I use it um, so I'm planning on rebuilding that around the G2 at some point, the gig rig thing. There's some more patch cables there because basically I don't have enough space anymore. Since I redid the studio and I've got this camera over here and I need the distance because it used to be I kind of shot side to side here and, and I, I had a lot more space. So I've got a new desk arriving. Um, it might even arrive today, which is why I thought I better panic and get this video done. Uh, and basically all of the rack stuff is going to go into the desk itself. Uh, and then I'm going to have to rewire everything, which is going to be a bit of a pain. There's probably a full day's uh, mucking around to get that sorted out. But I think it'll be worth it because it'll give me all of this space back. Um, that wooden uh, little coffee table thing there is my pedal drawer at the moment. I'm not sure how that's all going to fit uh, in, in the grand scheme of things. That was the delivery people. They're going to be delivering my uh, new desk for me tomorrow. So I need to kind of get packed up a little bit. I'm not exactly sure what other stuff you'd like me to explain about how I film. You know, I mostly film... So the, the, the main GH5 is, is what's running all the time. Uh, the little one just comes out when we need to do a close up and it is just manually, I you know move it around to fit stuff. Uh, I've just got into this two camera editing thing. If I need a third camera, I use my iPhone on set on the, with the 4K settings. Um, uh, not sure what else it goes. I edit in Final Cut Pro. Uh, I've been using Film Convert as a color grading kind of tool, but only just recently on the new videos, I only just got into doing that. Like I said, the guitar sounds for nearly every video is going to be the Kemper. I nearly always use profiles by Michael Britt, who makes just like the best profiles for the Kemper. Uh, better than, uh, you know, I've made profiles for most of my amps, but I haven't really found it particularly successful compared to how good the, the ones uh, are that he makes. So I guess I'll just leave it to the bad boys. Um, uh, that's about it, really. This is This is my studio. This is where I spend, you know, nearly all of every day I've got the little cage down here which is where Ziggy stays if she's going to be uh, hanging out with me for the day but uh, at the moment she's a bit cross because she used to have a bit more of a run in the studio on a cable but uh, there's too many wires around here at the moment so I'm hoping when I rejig the studio that it'll kind of give a bit more space um, you know the, the back of the studio here uh, is just kind of like storage basically um, I've got my one platinum record that I've got there from a song I did with Katie Mello and my my YouTube congratulations thing for 100,000 subscribers. I'm at nearly at 900,000 now, so that was a, a while ago. I've got my little thing here, which I'm really proud of. This is a, uh, an autograph from the great guitar player Larry Carlton, who wrote, Wrong, ha ha ha. 
uh, from Larry Cutton on uh, a transcription that I did when I was fortunate enough to play in a backing band for a workshop that he did. Um, I mean, I'll show you into the deep dark dungeon, I suppose. Uh, which light is it for this? Yeah, here, this one. Um, so this is like guitar cases. Some of them are full. Some of them are the ones that are in the thing. You can see that there's just like loads of junk here. Basically, that's part of the reason why there's the big curtain there is to protect you from this. Most of it's boxed up, but a lot of it isn't. Um, it's a bit messier than usual because I've been digging through a few old archivey sort of boxes for those uh, videos I did about my history as a guitar player. Um, this is like a, a guitar books collection. I've got lots of books. I read a lot about guitar and, and stuff. These are these go right back though to, to the very first books that I've ever had. In fact, I found this just this morning. My very first ever guitar player magazine. Oh, guitar player magazine that I bought um, from when is it? December 1985. That's my first one. I always wanted one of those Valley Arts guitars. I never bought one. I should have. Um, and these are folders of transcriptions. So this is like you know I, a little while ago. I went through and I just sorted out literally uh, all of my guitar transcriptions are all in little folders uh, or little plastic sleeves here because I just they were getting lost and I was funny I was double transcribing stuff which is silly so it's kind of like my favorite artists you know jazz transcriptions Joe Pass, George Benson, Wes Hall, uh, Wes Hall, Wes Montgomery, Jim Hall, Robin Ford, Larry Carlton, Jeff Beck, classic rock, jazz standards you know all that sort of stuff is all sorted out um, yeah, lots of kind of interesting books there. It's a collection of the, the guitar, um, guitar techniques magazine that I write for. Um, that's all just stuff that I was using the other day. Uh, yeah, the old, the old trusty Makita, because I just figured out this. Um, I found a ceiling. Can I get that up or not? Yeah, a ceiling mount for this light rather than having this big stand there that kept tripping me over, which was a little bit, a little bit embarrassing. Um, I think that's about all that I've got to share with you. Really, it's. I mean, it's. It's not a huge space. It's fair, It's a lot bigger than uh, the previous studio I was in, uh, which was probably half this size. But the studio before that was like double the size. It's flickering, annoying, um, and I hate the fluorescent lights. I only ever put them on to get access to that little room at the back. So, um, yeah, if you got questions about the setup or how I'm how I'm filming, then uh, you could feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll you know I've got nothing to nothing to hide and if I can help some of you guys make better videos then I'd be more than happy to try and share um, any tips that uh, I got. Um, it's not normally a filming day, I don't know if you can hear it a little bit, There's, you can hear the footsteps upstairs of the dog and my daughter and my partner up there running around. Um, but uh, yeah, so normally I film uh, later in the week when the, when the girls are out, you know. Um, so uh, that's about it. Pretty casual kind of a video, I suppose. Hope it was slightly interesting. Um, I'll go through all of the, the the audio part of the setup a little later on when I've got this new desk sorted out. I suppose I'm going to need to get that kind of packed up today, actually. But I've wanted to do a bit more filming. It's actually Dave Grohl's birthday today. His 50th birthday. I can't believe Dave Grohl is 50. And I've just been this, spent the whole morning this morning rocking out to The Pretender by the Foo Fighters. So I've been practicing that tune and... Uh, uh, yeah, I need to do a little bit more work on that just to tidy it up and then uh, start doing uh, a, a video for it. It's going to be my first song that I've done with this new setup, the first song this year. Um, and uh, I've been kind of laying off the songs channel a little bit. Just I really wanted to focus on the lessony sort of stuff a bit more than the songs. Everyone's doing songs. I feel like I excel more at the lessony thing. I, don't, I love doing the songs thing, and, and and I feel like I do a good job of that as well. I'm pretty studious when it comes to you know getting it right and researching it or whatever so uh anyways yeah hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you for plenty more videos very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye